This year's journey to Sturgis took me from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, across the upper peninsula of Michigan, and through the states of Wisconsin, Minnesota, and of course, South Dakota. I took back roads almost exclusively and camped in the woods for free as much as possible. The Upper Peninsula was a place I'd been hearing about forever, and finally, here I was. It's hard to really put into words, but the whole place had a certain vibe about it, which was like nowhere else on the planet. Everything seemed to be green and alive. There was a sense that bright sunny days like these were a rarity and something to be cherished. For the past two months, I'd been nearly inundated by torrential downpours, hail, and thunderstorms. Judging by the weather patterns in the UP, it didn't seem like I'd be getting a break anytime soon. Pretty much ever since I left Virginia, I've been dealing with this off and on, mostly on, all across Canada. It really gets to grating on your nerves after a while because you can't really do anything, but at least I got a roof over my head. The storm had come in fast and furious, and pretty soon the sun was back out. Fresh tomato from the farmer's market, and just doing ground beef, a little bit of cheese, chipotle salsa made in Canada. As I mentioned earlier, I'd been either riding hard or stuck in my tent for the past two months. So I was about ready to find a cool spot to hole up and get situated for a week or so. That is the enormous Lake Superior. The Great Lakes uh, region of the U.S. is famous for smoked fish. Uh, these happen to be smoked herring. It was eight bucks for these three fish so not bad and this comes uh, at least in part uh, due to the native uh, Ojibwe tradition uh, as well as the Finnish tradition uh, there's a lot of Scandinavians in particular Finnish who settled here uh, back in the day uh, so you see a lot of uh, influence a lot of fish and uh, and things like that of course there are a lot of fish around here because there's so many freshwater lakes uh, everywhere you go I mean it's like you can't walk a uh, hundred yards without stepping into a freshwater lake pretty much so uh, anyway these look good I'm just going to eat the whole thing, uh, you know, head, fin, bones, uh, to get all the calcium and everything like that. I'm not suggesting people eat bones, but, uh, but certainly the smaller bones are absolutely edible. You get a lot of calcium. Just try not to choke. Once I got to Marquette, I was totally digging the vibe of the place. The next order of business was hunting out a halfway decent spot to make camp. To do so, I'd be relying on my knowledge of stealth camping in order to hopefully find a good level spot close to town. The first spot I found was good, but was a little tricky getting in and out of.
As the days rolled on, I rested up, got a feel for the town, and continued looking for better spots. night uh, I got some stuff I have to do in town so since I'm stealth camping out here you just have to pack everything up wet sometimes and just deal with it but it is what it is although I would have liked to have left all my stuff set up in the end that spot was just way too accessible I'd gotten friendly with a number of the locals at this point, and before long I started running into people I knew at the grocery store. In spite of being an outsider, I felt just like another member of the community. All right, hanging out outside of this. Uh, there's actually a campground over there. It's like 20 bucks a night. No point in doing that while I got my spot uh, over that way about a mile. But um, yeah, I like to come out here and use the picnic table and kind of set up and uh, do a little bit of cooking. Uh, they got a water spigot over there, so uh, that makes it easier for doing dishes. But anyway, I got my rotisserie chicken. That's nothing new. And uh, some of this, I don't even know how to say that, kudiji uh, sausage. Apparently, this is a UP thing because I keep seeing it everywhere. So my guess is that at some point, uh, there were a lot of Italian immigrants in the area, maybe. Basically kind of an Italian sausage. Just something to, to mix it up with the rotisserie chicken, man. I'm always looking for ways to make that <laughs> more interesting and, and uh, kind of spice it up as it were. So I had to uh, go on a round of antibiotics uh, recently for Lyme disease, doing this kombucha just to kind of get some more uh, good bacteria into my system. One of the most enjoyable aspects of my travels is learning about the local foods of wherever I'm at. In doing so, it makes the experience feel a lot more authentic, and I often learn a little bit about the culture and history as well. There we go. Smells pretty good. Doesn't smell like Italian sausage at all. Up to this point, I'd been facing a dilemma. I really liked the town and wanted to stay a bit, but was unsatisfied with the spots I'd found thus far. Finally, I found an ancient dirt road connecting to a bike path with level ground and a nice lush canopy up top. First, I'd need to do a little landscaping. The next day it was the 4th of July and I took the scenic route back into town. The holiday was an excuse to break away from my typical diet of rotisserie chickens and try some more of the local specialties. So this is a beef pasty. Uh, it's kind of a famous specialty of the area. Uh, basically brought over from a lot of uh, 
Uh, Cornish immigrants way back in the day. It's like a pastry shell uh, filled with um, beef, rutabaga, um, and a couple other things. That is awesome. This uh, is definitely the kind of food you want on a cold day or any day. You can see just full of rutabaga, uh, potato, beef, and everything else. I could have done some serious damage in that pasty shop if left unsupervised. Those things were out of sight. just shows how quick it can turn on you. Basically it was like 75 degrees sunny. I was able to finally get back to my spot and get the tarp uh, strung up and get everything set up and then it started raining. Uh, but this, I don't know if it's just the UP or the Great Lakes region in general, but the storms are very fast moving on the radar and they seem to just come out of nowhere. They just kind of spontaneously appear and then start heading east, uh, from what I've been able to tell. It's almost kind of like jungle weather, where it's like 80 degrees and sunny one minute, pouring down rain the next, and then it's sunny again. I don't know if I'll be so lucky today, but take what you can get, be glad that you're dry. Getting ready to take off. I've been here for about nine or 10 days, uh, just relaxing and uh, getting to know a lot of the locals uh, there in the town of Marquette, uh, which has been good. You know, it's, it's always fun kind of running into people at the grocery store and you feel like a part of the community for a little while. Kind of a shame to leave, but uh, I got a couple more weeks until Sturgis. So uh, I got to put down some miles. For the next leg of the journey, I headed across the UP and into the state of Wisconsin. Party space, I guess. There's the light switch. There we go. Cool, yeah, I guess if you got a fucking wedding reception or something like that. Ooh, there's a nice looking pool. Walk down here. That place is uh, $10 a night. Looks like I got water uh, and electricity, so I usually don't stay in campgrounds unless they're pretty cheap like that. 
It is gorgeous. Holy shit, there's a waterfall. You know, I've always been uh, really impressed with the state of Wisconsin. There's always something really special about it. Look at the way that rock uh, wears like that. It's kind of in a blocky sort of a pattern. Separating these two bodies of water, little strip of land. I guess they call it an isthmus. Some really cool looking giant ferns uh, of a species that I'm not sure I've seen. Only one way back and that's up the rocks. Yeah, nobody out here. So I just kind of commandeered that little shelter right there. I put my bike under there. It was looking like rain earlier, but uh, I never really did, so. Yeah, here's this little shelter. Looks like it's probably got lights that work. I've just been sitting down there working on my computer, using the power. Got about another 800 miles or so to Sturgis. So I'm gonna put down some miles uh, today and probably get as far as like St. Cloud, Minnesota. Probably hole up somewhere for a day or two, uh, get another video out and then uh, get back on the road. So I'm still in Wisconsin, uh, right on the edge of uh, the border with Minnesota. So uh, the weather's good. It's uh, overcast, uh, not too hot. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of this good weather and put down some miles and uh, probably stop somewhere around St. Cloud. But we'll see. I never know where I'm going to end up. As I entered the southern half of Minnesota, there was a sudden 10 degree increase in temperature. After some searching, I found a trashy spot in the Rum River State Forest. Soon, however, I realized I wasn't alone. I haven't seen a dead body in the woods yet, but this might be a first. <laughs> kind of looks like more of a scarecrow slash uh, something a crazy homeless person uh, decided to do. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you get some crazy, crazy dudes uh, living out in the woods. 
This was a weird spot for sure. Besides my friend hanging out in the woods, there were signs everywhere of heavy methamphetamine use. Nevertheless, there was a serious storm headed my way, so I made the best of the situation. All right, battening down the last of my hatches, making sure everything's secure. Got a storm coming in, or at least it sounds like it. Kind of a weird spot. Obviously, some fucking bizarre stuff has happened here. Yep, just getting ready to wait it out. All right, 10 a.m. I've been uh, hanging out, working on my video. Uh, it absolutely poured down rain last night, lightning, electrical discharge everywhere. The sky was just going crazy. Uh, the temperature, by the way, is uh, going to be into the 90s today, which is quite a change from uh, the UP in northern Wisconsin, where I just was. So the days of 65 degree weather are over from this point out. Continuing exclusively on back roads, I headed southwest through the city of St. Cloud. Still got a Kickstarter on it. 900 double overhead cams, four cylinder. It's in good shape, frame looks good. Fast when it came out. The scenery was less than spectacular as I entered the Great Plains region of the United States. As I mentioned before, I really don't like using campgrounds, but when you're really putting down the miles, it's often the fastest and most convenient option. All right, everything absolutely soaking wet this morning and not a drop of rain. That's all from dew. I really should have seen that and put my tent under there, but that was just such a nice uh, spot in there. This campground was $14 for the night uh, with the shower. That's about my maximum usually, unless I'm really in a pinch. Don't spend too much on campgrounds just because it's not really feasible long-term. It's about 6.30 and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get back on the road and uh, put down some miles, a lot of flat plains across. Generally better to get an early start. If there's one thing I've learned from experience, it's that the early morning is the best time to cross the Great Plains. The brutal heat and heavy winds don't typically pick up until later in the afternoon. That's usually true, but not always. There was a whole lot of nothing for the next several hours.
absolutely nothing out here. This is a, a route I haven't taken before north of the big interstate. There's like a route of uh, just kind of back roads going through there. Absolutely no trucks out here, which I like, especially in a place like this that's really flat. Really sucks, you know, getting crosswinds and turbulence coming off of trucks and stuff. So uh, this has ended up being really good. A lot of people might find this kind of riding boring. Uh, I actually really like it. When I started seeing the rolling green hills of the prairie, I knew I was getting close. This area was featured prominently in the movie Dances with Wolves, and for me, will always be a symbol of South Dakota. Man once said, if you go too fast, you'll outrun your adventure. Factoring in hanging out in the UP and generally taking my sweet ass time, the 1100 mile journey took just over two weeks. Now that I was here, I had about a week and a half to kill before the show. Hey, what's up? This is Joe. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video of the ride to Sturgis. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. And uh, as usual, I've included an optional donate link in the drop box for anybody that might like to contribute to this project. Uh, additionally, the, uh, the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally is about to kick off here in a couple of days. As usual, I'll be working for Memphis Shades. We're set up behind the JP Cycle Store in Sturgis. So be sure to come by and see us uh, if you need a windshield or uh, just want to come over and say hi. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road. It was a few days before the rally, and I was perched at my usual spot on the cliff, watching some pretty ambitious ATVers, when I happened to look down and see a note. Saw this little folded up piece of paper with DMV on it, which is me, obviously. Um, the fact, first of all, that this little piece of paper would stay there without the wind, because we get some pretty high winds uh, coming in through there, uh, it's pretty amazing. So I opened it up and here's a little handwritten note. Um, it's obviously been rained on and, and uh, survived some weather, but uh, it says, Dear Joe DMV, I hope this note finds you in good health and fortune. I'm a fan of your work and you've inspired me to take on my own DMV journey. I use lowercase because I am just a Padawan. It's my fourth day moto camping. Thank you for everything you've been doing, and please continue to share. I hope to see you on the road someday. Sincerely, D. Jones, 61923. So, yeah, I mean, that was just kind of uh, incredible. Whoever wrote this really means a lot to me, man.